Did you, cause like, I know you worked with like Darren Chris and John Stamos. Like, did you, you worked on Glee? Was that all on Glee? I did work. I didn't work specifically on Glee, but I worked with a lot of the people privately while they were doing Glee and after. So I worked with, you know, Leah Michelle, Darren Chris, Matthew Morrison, I've known for years. So I worked with Matthew on that. John Stamos is one of my best, best, best friends. And I worked with him on it. And, oh, there was a lot of them. Pekka Tobin. I'm trying to think of all of them. Jenna Oskowitz. Um, wow. oh, I can't remember everybody's name, but I did work with quite, at least 10 people from the show. And you never saw any diva behavior from any of those people mentioned? No, and I know who you're probably referring to. And I swear on the Bible, never once. I really didn't. I just didn't. And it's funny because Kristen Chenoweth was on the show. And, and one day we just talked for a minute about, you know, that someone said someone had ex exhibited some, you know, behavior that wasn't exactly you know, calm. Um, and both of us said, have you ever seen anything? I said, no. She said, neither have I. And we were both like, we've never seen it. So no, I, I have to say, I really haven't. I, I would be honest with you there because I, I wouldn't like that. If I saw someone behaving badly, I'd be the first person to call them out and say, you know what? That's bullshit. You shouldn't be doing that. I don't think anybody should be doing it because everybody is working so hard whether it's behind the scenes, in front of the camera, all of that, that really there's there's no time for that. Crap. And like if your name is like number one on the call sheet, it's almost like the opposite. It's like you set the tone. Yeah, but like a I, responsibility. I never saw any of that behavior. I wish I had because I know it would be fun and dishy to tell you, but. Well, I've had other people on here that have said that they've seen it and have gone. Well, and you know, and I'm not taking away yeah. from them. And that's the thing. If they did have that experience, then that was their experience and they did it. I was never on the set ever on Glee. You know, almost exclusively it's either been at my house in my studio where I am right now or in their dressing room. So there you go. I mean, who's going to act like a diva here? Why, why would they? You know what I mean? Well, and I think you know, they're trusting you in a sense with their biggest asset, like they're, they're, they're money maker yeah. and you're there to help them. Yeah. So I would think, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not discounting that. I like, I just would think that, you know, you're there to really help everybody with their voice. Yeah. So like I said, I'm, I'm not saying it's not true because I wasn't there. So I don't know, but I just never experienced it. Well, Ariana Grande has said that you're, she, you're her favorite person ever. Vanessa Hudgens has said, coming to your house is like going to a friend's house. Katy oh. Perry says you have more positive energy than anyone she's ever met and that you don't dish. So I knew you wouldn't dish, but yet I still invited you here behind the velvet rope. <laughs> and that, you know, she trusts you implicitly. So, I mean, nobody has anything bad to say about you. Are you really this nice? You know, here's, <laughs> well, the answer would be yes and no. I mean, I can be as dishy as the rest of them, but you're just asking about people that I have nothing to dish about. If you ask me about some of my personal friends, I could write a book. But here's the thing, uh, you know, it's such a good environment. Like people come in, they want to be helped. They want to learn. They want to get better. They have a goal in mind and we work on it. So it's just really pleasant, even when it's there's high stakes and there's some nerve wracking, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? What's the words when the stakes are so high, like a live show, like the Grammys, that's a big show or the Oscars, you know, live, you're out in front of millions and millions of people. So people's nerves might be a little on edge, but, you know, for the most part, and I always try to keep it light and funny, if I can joke about something, I will, because I always think that's the best way to diffuse your nerves is to find something humorous about it, to laugh about it, not try to hide from it, just go with it, you know? And so, and I'm very lucky, I am a pretty upbeat person. I, I don't, I, I feel like I used to have to work at it when I was much younger. Now, I, I just am that person, I'm lucky. That's, you know. The older we get, right? The more just like, whatever. Yeah, when you've been through a lot and you see, and I also have a lot of empathy because I know how hard it is. I, I can't imagine, you know, when you're on the world stage and everybody's looking at you, talking about you, commenting on you or whatever, I just can't imagine what that would be like. I can't imagine how overwhelming that must feel, you know, the good things and the negative things, you know, both. And so, you know, I just feel like my job is to keep everything happy and light and make people feel good and have the right mind space to get out on stage and perform because you have to be in the right mind space. You have to.
do you get starstruck? I mean, you know, many, many, many years of Bette Midler and all these other people. I mean, are you the type that gets starstruck? Well, you know, what I would say is I get awestruck with people's talent or their accomplishments. So if someone's just famous that I meet, then I, I wouldn't say I was starstruck by them because I, you know, been around so many, but I am awestruck by talent and by people's accomplishments. And that never goes away. Like if I meet someone when they're 15 and I keep seeing their accomplishment, each accomplishment is exciting to me. It never gets old. So in that sense, yes, I'm continually in a state of, it never gets old. I never get jaded. I'm excited about every single one of them. And I am excited every time I get to work with a new person. It's really fun for me and exciting. So yes, I guess the answer is yes. <laughs> I what's, what's Bette Midler like? Oh my God. She's like, in the space of an hour, you might meet five or six people. I mean, she has so much going on and she's funny and witty, but very serious, very concerned about the world, very politically active, very concerned about the environment. I mean, she sent me like four cartons of paper straws and said, if I ever catch you with a plastic straw in your house, you're dead. You know, like she's very concerned about those things. And she's also really, really funny, but she's very dedicated. I mean, it's unbelievable. When we were doing, I had worked on her Vegas show with her. And she was in her 60s, I think 62, 63 or whatever. And, you know, she'd get up and run two to four miles. She would do a Pilates class. She would work out. She would take a dance class. She would do a dance rehearsal. I would fly up. We would do a voice lesson for 90 minutes. Then she would do hair and makeup, then do the show, then do a meet and greet. I mean, she was going the entire day. And that was so inspiring to me. It, it really made me think, wow, that is very, very inspired to see someone at that age so passionate and enjoying it so much. And working really hard. Working really, really hard. Never phoning it in, never being casual. But she's as charming and as funny and for sure as interesting as you might think. I'm picturing her being pretty interesting. She's a whirling dervish. <laughs> do you ever, because like you said, you know, it's your job to like keep everybody calm and like they have a job to do and these big performances. Do you, because like you have to be living under a rock sometimes like not to read things about, like you said, like, you know, like Ariana, Katy Perry, like, so when you read or hear, not that you're looking for it, you know, like MGK and Megan Fox, I know you've worked with Machine Gun Kelly or Megan Fox, one of those two, I think. But like, do you, like, then do you, when someone comes to your house, are you like, well, they might be in a bad mood today. Like, I mean, do you get into that? Like the personal stuff with them or like, is it like, how could you not know what's going on with certain people, whether, you know, you're not looking for dirt, but it's just in your face. Yeah. Well, by the way, I, I barely know MG. I, I know him because he did a song with Camila. I got to know him. And then I did a few lessons with him and he was great. What a great guy. We had a really interesting conversation the first time we ever worked together. Very smart. Um, you know, sometimes I'll feel it when someone comes in once in a while, someone will give me a heads up like a manager or agent or a mom might say, Hey, just so you know, they're going through a rough patch because they know, I don't know. They know I try to stay away from all that. So they'll just kind of say, just letting you know, or they're tired because, and a lot of times they'll come in and just say to me, Hey, I had a really rough night because or this happened. And so then I try to go, okay, well, let's work on it. Let's try to let go of it. Let's do some breathing exercises. Let's just let that out of our body. Because if you can just get someone to be in the present moment, I don't know if you ever read the Eckhart Tolle book, uh, The Power of Now, but being in the present moment. Right now in this moment, everything is okay. You know, letting go of the past and not, you know, paying attention to the future. Now I have a cousin who's the opposite. Her motto, her husband used to say, her motto was, why enjoy the present when you can regret the past and fear the future? <laughs> Which I was like, oh my God, that, that was so her. But the truth is, I mean, even she's changed. But I feel like, yeah, if you can be in the present moment, everything else just kind of falls away. 